I talk to data scientists and software developers every single day, and the minute I start talking about continuous integration with them, their brains like explode. They puke a little bit inside their mouth. They really don't want to hear anything about that. So I wanna fix that. I have here a Python script that trains a machine learning model, and I wanna show you how we can build together a very simple continuous integration workflow that will execute, automatically execute that script to generate a new version for that model. So we're gonna train a machine learning model and we're gonna produce a new version that we are going to publish on GitHub. If you have access to GitHub, you have access to do this. This is going to be so simple that by the end of it, I promise you're gonna to want to send me an email saying, dude, that was easy. Now there are two bonus things here. So number one, I'm gonna to try to build that workflow using GitHub Workspace Copilot. So there's gonna be AI doing most of the work that is required to build this workflow. And number two, when we're done with the workflow, when you see the workflow working, I'm gonna show you how you can use Blacksmith, who's sponsoring my video, to run that workflow twice as fast and for half the price that will cost just using GitHub Actions. So this is gonna be an amazing video. Let's start by taking a look at the Python script. This is the project that we're gonna use to create the GitHub Actions workflow. There are only three scripts here, it's very simple. Uh, first, I have a main.py script, which is the one that you see here. And this script uses the fit function from the train script to basically create, train a model. And then we're saving that model in disk, right? The, the name is gonna be model.keras. The train script is where most of the action happens. So we have three functions inside. Load data, which loads the data set and pre-processes that data set. Build model, which defines a very simple sequential model, the one that we're gonna be training. And finally, the fit function, which is the one that trains that model. It compiles the model and trains that model using the data set. That's it, those are the two main scripts. There is a third script where I wrote a few unit tests that make sure that the functionality in the train script works as intended. So uh, we can just run this unit test using the pytest command. So pytest, uh, let me see, is called testtrain.py. And there, you know, this is gonna just basically run those five unit tests. It's really fast, it's not a big deal. Awesome, so as part of our GitHub Actions workflow, we want to run the unit tests, just make sure everything is working, and then produce a new model and then publish that no model version. That is the goal. I'm gonna go to the GitHub interface because we're gonna be creating the GitHub Actions from this interface here. Uh, if you go to the Actions tab, you will see that GitHub offers you an entire library of pre-created uh, workflows that you can just modify and use as you see fit. We're gonna create something completely from scratch and we're gonna be using Copilot to do that. So we're gonna have an AI model do that for us. I'm gonna click on code, go to Copilot, and I'm gonna describe what I want to do, okay? So we want to set up a GitHub Actions workflow with the following steps, okay? So first we want to install Python, install requirements.txt file, Number three, after we prepare the environment, we want to run the unit tests. Number four, run the main.py script that will produce the model. And number five, create a new release using the model.keras file produced by the main.py script. Okay, so I'm gonna click start task. And now Copilot is going to generate uh, the full specification is gonna generate a plan to do all of the changes that it needs to do. Now, I'm not gonna go into details here. I'm just gonna read over it. My recommendation is anytime you're using AI to do code, to code anything for you, just please take a, take a second and review that everything is correct. But here, I'm just gonna change this. It says I, a new file, Python app, YAML will be generated. I'm gonna change that to workflow. The workflow, I'm gonna change it here as well. I just want to just name it workflow.yaml. 
So that's fine, that's fine. I'm gonna generate the plan now. So now the plan is telling me exactly what's going to happen. It's gonna create a new GitHub Actions workflow file. It's gonna define a job. We're gonna go line by line, just making sure that everything is correct. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's do implement selected files. And now this is going to generate the code of the action. Notice that any action that you create, any GitHub actions that you create, will go into a .github slash workflows folder. That's the way GitHub uh, actions work. Okay, so this is the code. So let me just hover over it. Okay, awesome. I'm going to assume this is great. I'm gonna create a pull request. The description is gonna be automatically generated by Copilot, which is amazing. Now I'm gonna create that pull request. And now that it's ready, I can go back to the repo and I can go to the pull requests. And here is the pull request that we want. I'm gonna merge it here. Again, I always recommend you check the code. I know this code is, is going to work fine. So just make sure you do that anytime you use Copilot or any AI uh, to generate code. So after creating this, you'll notice there is a new folder called GitHub slash workflow. So we're gonna go inside and we are going to uh, review to see what this action does, okay? So I'm gonna edit this file and we're gonna see step-by-step step what's happening here. Okay, so first of all, this is the name. The name is Python application workflow. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna say model release workflow. That's the name of our workflow here. This is gonna be running on an Ubuntu latest runner. I'm gonna show you after this runs, after we get this working, I'm gonna show you how to replace this runner for a much faster and cheaper runner using Blacksmith. So this is running on an Ubuntu latest runner. The steps, so first we're gonna be using the checkout version two step. These are actions that are out of the box. So GitHub provides a bunch of actions. All of them are in the documentation. This particular action will check out our code so it will make our code available to that particular computer so we can do stuff with our source code. Uh, GitHub also allows you to use action, third-party actions. People produce actions to do a bunch of stuff that you can use here, which is great. So after checking out the code, uh, the new step is set up Python and it's using the set up Python version two action, which is an out of the box action and the parameter is the version, which is 3.8. I'm gonna change this to 3.10. That's the one that I'm using locally. So I'm changing that to 3.10. All right, the new step here, it says install dependencies and it's just running a script. And as you can see here, it's upgrading PIP and right away it's installing all of my requirements. Okay, so that's awesome. After that, I'm just running my unit tests. I'm actually going to specify here, test train, .py. So I'm gonna specify, uh, if you run PyTest, it's just gonna run any tests on any script. And here I'm just specifying that particular script just a little bit better. Okay, after doing that, we are executing the main file. This file, when it runs, it will produce the model.keras file, which is the one that we want to use for the release. Okay, so after doing that, there is an upload action, which is going to upload this model.keras, uh, make it available. It's just uploading it as an artifact of my project. And then finally, there is a create release, which is using Marvin Pinto. It's an action, it's a third party action, and it's, it's called automatic releases latest. The parameters are the token for the repositories using my secret, which is already defined here on my repo. The automatic release tag is called latest. It's not a pre-release and the title is new release. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna call it model, that's the title. And the files that it's going to be using is the model.keras file. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna recommit the changes. I'm gonna do that. And this will re-execute this action workflow. So let's see if this, this is actually working. Notice that the first time my workflow run, it did not work. You see this failure here? All right, so let's click there and see why it failed. You can go to build and you can see that there was a problem 
installing dependencies. So there was a problem when running this, probably because of the Python version 8. So let's wait for this new, new, new one here that we updated to use Python 3.10 and see if that one works. It's executing right now. You can see it is in progress. You can see this yellow thingy circle moving. Let's click there. So it set up Python. So that was awesome. It's using 3.10 here. It's now installing dependencies that run. It's not running my unit tests. Awesome. Remember, this action is now going to execute every time you push a new update to your repo, which is great because you can have somebody in your team making changes to the script. As soon as they push uh, to the main branch, this workflow is going to start running and you will get the whole process will automatically run. And if there is a mistake, the tests will catch that mistake. If there are no mistakes, we should get a new release for our model. So let's see how that works. Okay, so it completed the job. Let's go back here. Let's go to the main tab. And as you can see, we have one release and that release is now called model, the name, the way we named it. I'm gonna click on that release and you can see these are the assets associated with that particular release. Now this action took one minute and 32 seconds to run. This is what I'm going to do now. First, I'm gonna to go to my Visual Studio code and I'm going to update so I can get all of the changes down here. I'm gonna update everything that I have. Okay, so now I want to go to my train script. Sorry, I'm not gonna close that. I'm gonna to go to my train script and I'm going to change the number of epochs from five, I'm gonna change it to something like 200. Now, I do not need to train this particular model for 200 epochs. What I want to do is simulate a long running process. So the GitHub Actions takes actually a long time to finish running. To make it closer to like an actual production application where running a model takes a long time. So I'm gonna make this change and I will commit the code and push it. Because our GitHub workflow, if we go back to the, to the workflow, we go to code, we open the workflow again. Because our GitHub workflow is on push, that means that as soon as I push the new change, the workflow will execute again. Let's see if that is true. Let's go to the actions here. And I'm, now I'm going to commit this. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say uh, changed epochs to 200, okay? I'm gonna commit that and I'm gonna push synchronize with my repo. As soon as I do that, if I refresh here, notice that now I have a new workflow that's running that says changed epochs to 200. So now this workflow is gonna run and it's gonna execute all of the steps. Now, of course, we're not gonna wait until it finishes. So I'm gonna cut here and we're gonna talk as soon as this is done. All right, so the workflow is done. It took 17 minutes and 11 seconds to finish. So now let's try to run that a little bit faster. Remember, we're training a model for 200 epochs. So to make it faster, we're gonna start using Blacksmith. Blacksmith is sponsoring my video. They reached out and their job is to provide GitHub action runners that are two times as fast as the ones provided by GitHub and are twice as cheaper. As you can see, uh, they claim here on their website that they're two times faster and more than 50% cheaper. So how do we do that? How do we turn our GitHub Actions workflow into Blacksmith? It's very, very simple. Uh, when you sign up, it's free. You don't need a credit card and you create your account you're gonna see in Blacksmith that they have a migration wizard, okay? So if you click in this migration wizard, and after this, you have to do this after connecting uh, your Blacksmith account with your GitHub organization, you can select a repo. So in this case, I'm just gonna select the actions sample repo that we built, and this migration wizard will do the job for us. I'm gonna click on next, and as you can see, it found the, the workflow.yaml and the build process that we built before. I'm gonna click on next, and this is going to generate a pull request. So I'm gonna click on this button. 
this will create a pull request with the changes needed, which are very simple, to turn my GitHub Actions workflow uh, to start using the, black, the Blacksmith runners. So let me see the, the pull request so we can check the changes. There should be a couple changes only. So if I click here, here are the two changes. Instead of using Ubuntu latest, I'm gonna be using the Blacksmith for virtual CPU Ubuntu 20, 2204. And instead of using the Action Setup Python version two, I'm gonna start using the Use Blacksmith Setup Python version six. Everything else is going to be the same in my workflow. So everything else should work exactly the way it is. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna accept this pull request, which will kick off the process of running the action. So it's gonna take again a little bit more time. Keep in mind the previous action uh, took 17 minutes and 11 seconds. Let's see how much faster running the same workflow in Blacksmith is. I'm gonna click on merge pull request. I'm gonna confirm that merge. And then I'm gonna go to actions. And as you can see, this is doing the merge and that will execute the action. So let's wait and see what happens. So the new workflow just finished. It took a total of 13 minutes and 51 seconds. So we went from 17 minutes down to 30 minutes. That's about 20 to 30% increase on speed and much cheaper. Now, one of the things that I love the most about Blacksmith is this interface they created where you can see all of the statistics of your workflow. This is the model release workflow here that I just uh, I just ran. You can see all of the last 30 run history, the P50 duration, the P99 duration. You can see everything that's happening here. They also tell you how much money you would have spent running these workflows in case you are over your daily limit. Remember, you can sign up for Blacksmith for free. They give you 3000 minutes that you can use uh, every month. You don't have to input your credit card up until the point where you need more minutes. Check them out. It's a very, very simple way to keep your GitHub action workflows running the way they are, but do so cheaper and much faster. And the next time you're trying to release something, please consider GitHub actions. It's the easiest way to build a continuous integration workflow to release your models, to perform automatic unit testing, to do all sorts of tasks that you need to happen whenever somebody pushes code to your repo. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.